Thanks for joining us for another instructional video lesson from Experience Israel Now. David once hid from Saul in a place called En Gedi. To discover why he went there is to understand not only the, the wonderful color of that story, but also to understand something that would come along centuries later when Jesus met a woman in Samaria and offered her living water. You'll see what I mean in just a moment and maybe you can communicate the same truth to your class, your church, your small group, your Bible study, however you, you are using this information. Uh, the first thing we do as we go through these slides is to uh, just make sure we go through the scripture. And so David went up to the strongholds of En Gedi, and Saul is told that David is hiding in the desert of En Gedi. This is a stretch of the Judean wilderness that David had to um, to cover in order to get to En Gedi. Uh, now, through Google Earth video, we'll actually take you on that journey. I want you to remember something. David was a shepherd in Bethlehem as he grew up. Now, as a shepherd, he would have had to take his flocks to wherever the grass was. If you go to Israel today, you'll see that shepherds still go out in the Judean wilderness at certain seasons of the year looking for grass. It's hard to believe it. When, you, when you look at it from a distance, you say there's absolutely nothing for those animals to eat. But if you get down on your hands and knees, you'll, knees, you'll, you'll see little, little blades of grass. What I'm trying to say is that any shepherd from Bethlehem would have known the land that David had to travel to get to En Gedi. Now he's also trying to hide from Saul and his men. This is an easy place to hide. It's a rough land. You can you can, you can almost sense the enemy coming. Um, even if he were frightened, this was a good move on his part to get in a place like this where he could get lost. And he knows that En Gedi's out there, and he knows the way to En Gedi. In a sense, God is using those experiences from earlier in his life in a very important day now. And that's the way life works, and that's also one of the discussion question possibilities if you're leading a Sunday school class or a Bible study group or something you might want to throw into a sermon. When you hike this land, it's an unforgettable experience. It's not only rugged terrain, it's usually very, very hot. Uh, I don't know what time of the year that David chose to hide in En Gedi, but I've been in this terrain when it's been on 117 degrees. You have to carry your own water and you have to drink a lot of it. Dehydration takes place in a very, very short period of time. So what would David be looking for more than anything else as he goes through this land. I wonder what would be at En Gedi. The answer, of course, is water. As you continue the, the path, you're moving toward a huge body of water, and that's the Dead Sea. Uh, that is the largest body of water in Israel, and you can't drink a drop of it. There's way too much salt in it. It's like an illusion. I mean, you'd, you'd run up to it and want to drink the water. You'd want to be filled, um, and it's just it's, it's just the opposite of life. It's death. You drink that water, you're not going to live. You know, that, that in and of itself is a sermon illustration or a Bible study point that the world offers us so much that looks so appealing, and it's, it's really death. It looks like life. It looks like excitement, but it will just lead you to a point of great disappointment and even danger. But in En Gedi, not only were there places to hide, and by the way, you'll see some caves high on the cliffs. There are caves all over the area. When Saul finally came down to this area, there's a story about Saul going into a cave, and David nearly killed him there. Um, but as you go into En Gedi, you'll see the fresh water. And it is the freshest of all water you will ever find. Um, as it comes down, uh, the, the waterfalls, as it, it bursts forth from the top of these cliffs, what has happened is that water that has gone into the ground up around Bethlehem and Jerusalem and all along that ridge of Judean mountains has taken its time through some centuries to go drop by drop through all of that hard rocky soil, all that sand. It's purified along the way and finally it gets to the edge of these cliffs and there's some geological formation fault there where it just burst forth here at the place called En Gedi. And any place the water touches turns into an oasis. I mean, it, it reminds us that we're not far from Africa in this location because you can see the jungle undergrowth. You can see the animals that are there, uh, even the small deer. Um, but as you watch this video, just 
let's, let's go through some points. What was David looking for as he went to En Gedi? Water is the first uh, obvious answer. But because there is water, there will also be animals, small animals, large animals, um, and, and so food will be easy. There's also going to be protection. David hid from Saul in En Gedi, and there's a reason for that. It, he, it was an it was a easy place to hide for your own protection. And there was also comfort. In a place where temperatures over 100 degrees are just common, he's got all this fresh water that is cold, it's fresh, it's pure. It is such a delight that even today people will vacation, take a one-day break and just drive down to En Gedi, right by the Dead Sea, and they'll go in there and they'll swim and they'll just enjoy what is a delightful excursion in one of Israel, Israel's national parks. It's a, a hidden jewel. If you ever get to Israel, make sure you go by En Gedi and take a swimsuit. Uh, there's really nothing like it. By the way, just to throw this in, Psalm 42, which was not written by David, says, As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O God. The deer that are here at En Gedi are called the ibex. They're very small deer, and they come from Africa. Um, and they, they find their way to the water, and they are always present. If you spend any time at all in En Gedi, you'll certainly see some ibex. Um, there are other animals here, but that psalm is going to come to mind. The water is filtered. It's pure. Uh, it compares also to water that the people knew in, in, in Jerusalem, for instance. Um, in Jerusalem, this is an ancient water system. Look at the green moss that's over this thing. There's still water in it. They're not using this for drinking water today. But in Jerusalem, in any part of Israel where it only rains the latter half of December, the month of January, and the first half of February, people had to collect their drinking water for the rest of the year. They called it cistern water. And it will keep you alive. You can cook with it. You can, you can work with it. But you know, there's not a lot refreshing about water that's been sitting here for several months. Spider webs might be on top of it, and you might have to clean it. And you certainly wouldn't let anybody swim in it, so there's never going to be any comfort from it. That's the water everybody had. But down in En Gedi, they had fresh water. They even had a, a name for this water. In the Hebrew, Mayim Chaim. Mayim Chaim. You know what it means? It means living water. This water is alive. It's not that the other water couldn't be drunk safely. Of course it could be, or maybe you, you turned it into wine so it could be, but there's just a lot of difference between cistern water and the water that comes in a place like En Gedi. And so they called this kind of fresh water living water, Mayim Chaim. And that should bring you right to the story of in John's Gospel, uh, John chapter 4, where a woman is going to a well. She's going to get some of that water that's not so fresh. Jesus meets her. There's a conversation, and he offers her, Mayim Chaim, he offers her living water. And she says, where are you going to get living water? You remember, she wasn't all that polite. They, they were a long ways away from any fresh water source that would have been like in Getty. Um, but, but, but they all knew about living water. They all knew how enjoyable it would be. And Jesus offers her something she wasn't expecting. He offers her himself. He is the living water. He is the thing that is pure. He is the thing that is refreshing. He is the very substance that gives life. And you know, by the time that short stay was over, not only that woman, but that entire village came to a new understanding of what living water could be. This is your opportunity in this Bible study or this sermon or this small group presentation, even in a, in a classroom or perhaps your homeschooling, to, to talk about accepting the living water that Jesus offers. Um, to, to stay away from the dangers of a Dead Sea entertainment world that offers only death, even though it looks like life. Um, what we want is some of this. What we want is living water. So have fun with the presentation. Use it for the glory of the one who brought us that living water.